Hi, this is Christina with the Bold Care Team. We're going to take a look at navigating and personalizing your portfolio, which is some really fun stuff to do in Bold. So here we have your Bold profile page, and you can make this your own. You can add an avatar image to represent yourself, and a quick tip for our younger users, they may want to consider a photo of an animal, a favorite activity, or a photo that doesn't showcase their face up close. You can also add a cover image by uploading it from your computer, Google Photos, from your asset library, Google Drive, or even from the web. Now these web search images are high quality, free to use images that you can use throughout Bold. You can just type in whatever you like, pick an image that you enjoy and that represents you, and you can add it in as your cover photo. We do recommend using horizontal pictures for your cover photo. You can then drag the image up and down to your liking. If there's a very specific image or logo that you would like to showcase as your cover photo, we recommend using a photo that is 2280 by 600 pixels. The next thing you're going to want to do is edit your description bar. That's the section right below your name. Add a little bit about who you are, what you care about, what you do, or what people might need to know about you when they visit your portfolio. A quick tip about your username, if you do not know your username, take a look at the web URL of your home profile page. It will say www.bullbap.com, and then anything after the backslash in that URL is your username. When it comes to navigating Bulb, there are just a few buttons to note. Up here in the top right hand corner, the big one to keep in mind is this hamburger menu. It's the three lines inside of a circle. If you open it up, you'll get a drop down where most of your navigation will live. So on the far left hand side here, you'll have your activity feed. This is where you'll get notifications about when people publish work to you or publish work to a group that you're a part of. You will also get notifications if somebody copies a template of yours or if they leave a comment on your page or if they ask you to join a group. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on this activity feed. Next over here is your groups. We will talk more about groups later on and we'll teach you all about them. But remember, this is how you access your groups. This next section is your likes. You can like any bold page or collection by pressing the heart icon on that content. And a running list of those items will live in this like section for an easy access to view them. On the left hand side here is your asset library, which is the storage place for all of your assets in bold. Any piece of media that you add to any of your bold pages will be saved here. This means that all of your media, your photos, your videos, files, audio clips, all of it lives here forever and will remain here unless you delete it out of your asset library. You can sort by asset type by clicking on any of these icons here. You can also organize your asset library however you would like by creating folders. And finally, you can search your asset library to find the titles of certain images or files. You'll see up here in this corner, there's a storage indicator. If you are on a paid Bulb account, you actually have unlimited storage. So this means if your school purchased Bulb for you, or if you are on a Bulb Plus account, you can add as many assets as you would like. You also have access to this for life, so you can see these assets and use them in lots of different projects in the future. If I go back into my hamburger menu, there's another option I want to highlight here, which is the more menu. If I click this more dropdown, I have a lot of options. I can open my settings where I can go in and change my password or make changes to my emails. You can have multiple emails listed on your Bulb account. And remember, Bulb is yours for life. So if your school email address is the only email currently listed on your account, make sure to add a personal email address and password so that you can continue to access your Bulb account forever. Also in the more dropdown, I have a link to our bulbapp.com website, which is a great place to check out our blog, sign up for our newsletter, or keep up with the news of Bulb. Finally, the biggest resource I want to share here is the Bulb library. So a reminder, to access the Bulb library, if I go to my hamburger menu and click more and then click Bulb Library, I will be taken here. Our Bulb Library is where a wealth of resources live. So in here we have a tutorial that you can access at any time. So if you leave this training and you want to go over any feature that we have covered in greater detail, 
or go over it again with fellow Bulb users, you can click into any of these pages to learn more about each feature. A quick navigation tip for you, if I have opened a collection and I want to go back to the previous collection, I can just click this hyperlinked breadcrumb and it will bring me back to one level. So that's a great tip to keep in mind when navigating throughout your portfolio. Throughout the Bulb library, we also have a ton of free examples, templates, and inspiration from people all over the world to help you use Bulb to its fullest potential. I highly recommend you take the time to look through here and find resources that are helpful to your specific use of Bulb. Check back in on the Bulb library on a regular basis because we are always adding more and more great content. If I am looking around in Bulb or working on my content and I want to get back to my profile page, I can just click the Bulb logo at the top of the screen and be taken back to my home profile page. The last thing to note is this question mark up here in the top right hand corner of your Bulb profile page. This is a great resource for you. That question mark button will bring you to our help center. If you have trouble with any of our features, you can explore our help articles by searching any keyword here or by opening up any of the folders and browsing the articles. If those articles don't answer your question or if you need further assistance, you can click the Submit a Request button in the top right-hand corner. This will get you in direct contact with our help team who are ready to support you with your specific need. You can also chat with our team by opening up the chat feature in the bottom of your screen. You can access this page at any time by going to help.bullbap.com. I now want to talk a little bit about the difference between collections and pages. Both the Create a Collection and Create Page blue buttons are viewable on your home profile page or when you are inside of a collection you have created. Now, many people will ask, which should I create first? And the answer is, it's really up to you and your personal style. Collections are like folders. They are the way that you organize your work. You can organize your work in a lot of different ways. You can organize it by subject area, skill set, goal, period of time, or in any other way that you would like. Pages are where your content comes to life. A page is where your text, images, videos, files, audio files, and URL embeds live, and where you can express yourself. You'll notice that these tiles have this little collection icon in the bottom corner. It looks like two pages of text layered on top of one another. This indicates that this is a collection. On the other hand, if that icon is not showing up on one of your tiles, it means that it's a page. Collections can have pages as well as other collections stored inside of them. I can open up a collection to see what is inside. If I am inside of a page and I want to go back to the collection or navigate between various pages, I can do so here in the bottom line of the page. I can click back or next to flip through like a book or I can click View Collection to go back to the collection. Bulb is flexible and movable and it can grow with you, and the organization options are no different. When you are organizing your portfolio, you can drag and drop your content. So you can drag and drop tiles to reorganize the order of your content. You can drag pages or collections into other collections as well. Also, you can take a page that lives inside of a collection and drag it to the breadcrumbs up here and drop it so that it will live back on your home profile page or the collection that is listed in the breadcrumbs. Keep in mind that when you drag and drop content into different collections, the publishing permissions may change. Stay tuned to learn more about that in our publishing video. For any additional help on navigation and personalization, check out our help pages at help.bullwrap.com. Thank you.